Hello, today my focus is intention with massage in a professional manner as well as, you know, um, some people are into lang love language of touch. Uh, so a lot of people I know, especially this person, enjoys physical touch. Uh, and some people think it physical touch is just a sexual thing or the love language of physical touch and it's not uh, it's just maybe they like a pat on the back or a hug and I will be talking about other love languages I'm going to be doing a combination of quality time we're all having a lot of quality time now so might as well set your intention somewhere so you have less stress and pain together. And, you know, sometimes, you know, this is for both partners, you know, it doesn't have to be the woman giving the man a foot massage. You know, you can also learn how to massage your kids. And I'll be doing more tutorials or, you know, appreciation meditation. To me, getting a massage and giving a massage is a meditation for me. It gives me a chance to appreciate who I am because that's what I, one of the things I love to do, as well as you know appreciating those that appreciate what I do. And I feel like I will attract those types of people that want to just relax. And why I'm starting with the feet is a lot of times, depending on what your beliefs are and where your education lies, Sometimes we have to get people out of their busy minds. So if you can get them to meditate down into their feet, um, the more you relax them. I do a lot of East meets West type of massage. And I also have a sense of humor on here. So if there is some silly moments, that's just me. And I'm just that type of person. If you're wondering why <laughs> there's this on my, for, you know, my arms, this is how I, I like to always stay connected with the client. And I'm just not into having a holster of lotion or oil on me. And I just want it on my arm. I wash my arms, you know, and I don't mind touching someone's feet. A lot of times if I touch someone's feet and I need to go anywhere else on their body, I wash my hands or use sanitizer. That's just how I am. Uh, I also believe, you know, if my intentions or if I consistently practice being humble, calm, appreciating myself and others in body and mind, uh, my immune support will stay uh, in balance and not much will bother me. And I've also noticed once I started massaging his feet more and more, um, you know, there's less and just sometimes we need to work on their circulation. So the type of massage I will be doing is a little bit of lymphatic as well as Swedish the reflexology of the feet. You can do that on the hands and ears too. I will be practicing more of that. But right now we're just going to, I hope you can enjoy this too, be giving him a massage as much as I and he love it too. This is just when I go to people's homes, if they don't want to use my my mat or table, I um, I don't mind their bed or their couch. When I go to people's homes, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. And a lot of reflexology uh, practitioners, they may be this close or they'll be up above. But I'm big on I don't want to look down all the time. And I want to be able to move my body. So I do different ways of working on somebody's feet. So moving forward, let's get down to what everybody is usually excited about, as long as you don't mind your feet being touched. And you can have socks on them. You can use the sheet if you don't want to get that close to their feet or actually touch it. It's up to you. But we got a lot of quality time as we all know in this, um, and trying to respect CDC regulations. And, you know, I, I keep myself clean, but let's move forward. Uh, let's talk more action. All right.
so and another reason why I like to put lotion on my skin that I'm going to use is it warms it up which um, not a, some people really um, with their warm body they love cold hands cold lotion but most people they love it when you're warm and whatever you're using whatever doesn't cause an allergic reaction or anything they love that i kind of like to follow the meridians you can look that up what i'm talking about the meridian channels that i learned in eastern medicine and they all have their own direction and what this and that is so just follow your intuition what works for you and then and then reiki that i know i'm a reiki master teacher or level three whatever you want to call it as well as i take a lot of intuitive classes and i'm in the spiritualist program as a student for healing teaching mediumship and maybe become an ordained minister we teach on a little bit of everything that i'm talking about but may use other terms so don't get overwhelmed on the terms if you want to just put me on mute and just see what i'm doing you can do that too I'm really not easily offended and usually i have music going or I can sing to you if you want. <laughs> and some people like to talk. Some people are talkers. I usually, when I'm working on someone, I'm pretty quiet unless they want to talk about something or sometimes messages come across. Very big on intuitive messages if we're both open to it. I like to get a little workout while I'm doing this, so I may, like I'm rowing, push, pull, so I can keep my body from being stagnant or too stationary, get my abs working, squeeze down into my lower dantian, my, my pelvic region. into my abdomen some of us we're up here and we should just relax up there and breathe down into our abdomen some people in energetic work they feel for whatever their spirit their subconscious guide whatever term you like to use to, that tells them where to go. Some people will feel heat or they'll be feeling in their own body for where to go. And then reflexology, part of the foot has, has different, thank you, has different, I call it like buttons. So it's an indirect way of getting to certain meridian points for organs in the meridian world. So some cultures or practices like to say up here is where you have the brain into the ears and eyes. I'm just being really general here. We're not going that deep, you know, into the lungs, into the intestines. It goes down here into the pelvic area. And this is like where the rib cage is, but it just everybody's going to tell you something different in their own way. You just got to intuitively just know your intentions before you have the session. And just you, a lot of times I close my eyes. And I meditate. 
and his, his feet don't stink, so it doesn't bother me. But I like to have a sense of humor, too. Some people are like, ugh, how could you do this? I'm like, it doesn't bother me. Everybody shows compassion in their own way. Yes, there's indirect ways to work other parts of the body through the feet, the, heat, the hands, the ears, other things, depending on what you believe, what works for you. I'm very big on whenever you're doing anything in life, check in with yourself. What feels right for today in the moment? What happened yesterday with the same subject? Maybe different for you, a different person. I just believe there's only the present. Everything else no longer exists. And we all have our own perception of it. How he's perceiving this, or the client, or your loved one, or friend, is different from how I may perceive it. Yes, I can tune in to what... Well, with telepathy or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to be quiet for a moment. And I want you to tune in to the communication that is happening. Just being. Just being here, you know. Breathe deep and relax. Be good body mechanics. And just appreciate this moment. Leave all your worries behind. Feel the transference from all around us supporting us. Meditating into now, is in the moment, and not going back or too far forward. That's where real management of pain and stress is. Be in the moment and appreciate. Tune into what your body's doing. Feel a little tension in my lower back, so. I'm going to send some energy focus there of appreciation or whatever you want to call it. And I can feel it relaxed. But I'm also a practice this. Some of you, you know, you may need to do something else. Some of you like to use words of protection or me and I really don't need to protect myself. I'm just loving and appreciating and I believe that's what I'll attract back to me. Usually when I work on someone, I don't ask them how they felt afterwards. I look for things that are actually a change that are better, and I'll focus in on that. A lot of times when you ask somebody, well, how are you feeling? You know, there's, you get a whole mouthful of stuff. As to getting them to focus on the change that you see may help them. So let's go ahead and just breathe and relax. I like to keep it light so I don't have to dig in. I believe what hurts them hurts me and I believe I don't even have to touch the person in order to help them. And, uh, a microcosmic way to any small or macro or system like the big whole enchilada.
message I'm feeling right now from all of this is what I experience while I work with people. Some people, depending on their situation, they don't get this real genuine touch that has no intentions of sexual actions. You know, some people, you know, let's say their spouse passed away or, or never was taught how to touch a person without sexual action. To me, this type of education is a nice connection. And if you have an emotional release, you know, anywhere from tears to laughter to gas, it's a compliment to some of us, you know, as long as you don't punch us or threaten us or take it into sexual action, us therapists are pretty happy to support you in your balance with whatever release you have. This is safe space. I don't mind going to people's homes. So usually what I do is tons of events. I go to people or I support other practitioners or businesses. I'm very support everybody in a, in a way that is a win-win situation. And I don't like to be too committed to one place too long. I like to take breaks. I have short contracts. But If you can relax while they're relaxing, both will balance each other out. But if you're stressed out before you go into a session, try to relax, breathe deep, anything in life. Have you ever noticed a sports player or anybody, they're just in the zone. They make it seem so easy. You, know, you can just practice so much in your head, dreaming of things going well, and they'll go well. If you practice a lot on worrying about it going wrong, then what's my belief? So it'll go wrong. So you know you're loving yourself. I like to have a massage once a week if I can help it because I need to know what it's like to be the client. I love it when I put intentions forward, random, wherever I go, whoever works on me, they end up doing similar things that I do because I feel like our spirits are talking. And I put that forward like, oh. I hope they do this or that, or I love this about what I do. Because every massage therapist, everybody is an artist in their own right of how they enjoy life. Many practices of anything, people are different. And there's many forms of massage therapy. I like doing East meets West. Look it up online. But uh, what I liked about a lot of Eastern styles, Reiki, Wina, Thai, Ashiatsu, is they teach about the meridians, you know, those indirect points that you don't even have to use a needle or anything or cut into a certain spot. 
to get to. That again is acupuncture. I'm just saying that requires a license. Which I did a lot of continuing ed education towards, but I felt led um, morally part people with my words because obviously I like to talk and focus people into learning that they have more senses than they realize that is taught in education. The world is changing. It's always getting better. But are you allowing it? Or are you always seeing it as a stressful situation? And sometimes when I'm working on someone, a message comes through, and I don't have to tell them about it. I just look for the positive end result, or I just mind my own bliss. But if I really need to say something, I ask for their consent. Massage therapy, touching anybody. Like I had to learn with this man because his love of language, his love of language is touch. And mine isn't so much. We had to learn how when it was okay to have a hug or or any you know, certain things in any type of relationship. to communicate and if you're not in gender energetically imagining it going well in a certain way then maybe you need to communicate it or get distracted and let it go but always stay new in the relationship every day is a new day don't nag them about something they did five years ago and they haven't done it since Or people are going to slip up. The more you stay in appreciation, the less arguments you have and the more discussions will replace it. Or just nonverbal connections of understanding. as you can tell while I was talking about that it stirred up some things in me and in him so when you bring up the past I notice with certain clients if I get in a certain way especially when they fall asleep if I get in uh, make choices of focusing towards something that causes more stress and pain it there's just this connection going on and I feel it in them their muscles tense up I get these thoughts and feelings and pain starts being created in me it just depends on what you believe okay but when I calm down harmonize there's harmonics going on all the time communication is always happening regardless if you're talking or not just looking at him now he's really starting to fall asleep we're getting close to that So much the words. Where am I going with my thoughts? Am I, am I thinking too much? Some people, when you're around them, they give you this headache. It's a lot going on. So you've attracted that too. So you just gotta relax a bit and the situation will change. 
stay present. Time is now and that's where your power is. Sessions with me, they're just kind of random. You know, I got it from my family, my cousins, they call me random. I don't like to script things, I kind of like to make it up as I go. Just let your conscious be your guide. But things usually go better for me when I feel like I want to be in a win-win situation or I'm minding my own bliss. I'm not looking for a fight to be ornery. It's okay to be playful. Also, just know when it's appropriate. So be true to yourself. If you want to attract people, then become that type of person you want to be around. And unconditionally be in alignment when others are not. If you can understand what they're going through or if you need to leave the situation. Today's session was more about the energetic connection. A little bit of meditation of watching, hearing, feeling the harmonics that are going on in this session. We're all stuck in our homes most of the time unless we have that type of career that requires attention to the situation going on. I don't focus too much on that as much as I do respect CDC requirements right now but also when we're using what I've understood is we may not be physically together but also be mindful of what you're putting your attention towards like I don't watch a lot of scary movies because anymore if I do I just I'm in alignment if I can but I just less fear stress anxiety I just feel like our source or connection to spirituality as an individual is always there we gotta allow it in I just try not to make too many actions when I'm in stress, fear, rebellion, revenge, try to morally make decisions that help me avoid those things people worry about when I feel inspired. Like, I may want to go over here. Even working on a client, sometimes you get this notion like, hey, you're starting to hurt them. Focus. Or you may want to go here more today so you can customize it so you're not mindlessly doing something i love my career not just in massage therapy but supporting people and myself and enjoying life the art of living and the harmonics feel the well-being that is created with it even in the choices that may cause stress and pain. And I believe if you're watching this, that you're meant to watch this right now. So wherever you want to take this. And again, if you want to put this on mute, that's fine too. There's communication going on regardless. Even if I don't normally give 
massage the feet in this way. I'm learning how to relax my body and my mind so I can keep the harmonics where they need to be to reset the mind and body harmonics in this individual. You'll actually notice your environment around you, like people that are not in balance will just want to leave or they want to come up to your level. But don't go down to their level. You know, you got a big complainer or something like that. You know, I don't want to stay in that level with you. I will let you talk a little bit, but if, if you came to me, as long as I've been balancing myself out, you're ready for a change. Be happy. If you need to move your body around the stretch, sometimes you just need to move. And then I will be practicing meditation with mindful fitness. I don't want to keep this too long, so I'm going to just be quiet for a moment again. And I want you to feel what's happening here at this moment in time. But know that the older this video gets, yes, if enough people focused on it, there would be more power in this time. Well, I don't believe in space and time, but in this thought form that was manifested. I mean, to me, that's everything with symbols and, you know, any type of music or person, every time you th someone thinks about them, that momentum stays with them. They never die. Even when they transform into non-physical or go back in a different body, if that's what you believe. So a lot of people are stressed out over losing loved ones. The loved ones aren't as stressed out once they pass on. So I believe if you just learn the harmonics of who you truly are, you will live longer in this form your body form body knows how to heal itself but are you allowing it in with inspiration i don't believe in pain no gain it's good to have stress yes to make choices to have a better future but why do you need to keep bringing up the past when it's stressing you out and creating illness Go to the root of the situation. Dive deep. Not too deep. I don't believe you have to go down so many past situations because it just leads to more and more. You ever want to change a situation that happened in the past? Get in a good feeling place and then rewrite the story and how you wanted it to end or move forward. That's what's helped me out. I just get distracted and it resolves itself and all of a sudden you get this connection with someone that you've had a weird situation with. A really stressful situation that because you keep focusing on it, it just causes you pain and eventually manifests into a physical ailment. 